Hi, I'm Adam's Downboy, and welcome to part six of our Vow of the Disciple raid guide series. With me are my six Mother Clucker clan mates, Aaron PK, Alex, Electric Sheep, Minoni, Tooks, and Zone Runner, who will demonstrate the exquisite control of super use that we demand of all clan mates, never mind that they're an admin. We're going to illustrate how to complete the Dominion or Rulk boss encounter. Thankfully, while it's as hectic as previous encounters, this all takes place in the same area, so we feel it's actually easier to complete than the Exhibition encounter. As in all previous encounters, knowing the glyph names is essential. Everyone on the fire team should be able to communicate which one needs to be cleared from an obelisk if needed. I've added a link in the description to a website that you can use to help memorise the official bungee callouts and make them easier to use in encounters. The fight uses multiple mechanics that you'll have learned from the previous encounters. Your aim as a fire team is to remove an orange force field from the lower area by clearing six obelisks to force Rulk to retreat upstairs, where you can clear a further four obelisks to damage him. It's fairly easy to do in two damage phases, but you'll have three chances before Rulk enrages. As you land on the platform, you'll see a rally banner and a plate on the floor which looks like a blank or neutral glyph. When active, this shows the Give Glyph, so I'm going to refer to it as the Give Plate. There are six obelisks in the area, three on the left, which we'll refer to as L1 to L3, with one being the closest, two in the middle and three the furthest, and R1 to R3 on the right. You'll see blank areas on them where glyphs will appear. On the left and right side in the middle and at the back of the area, there are totems that show glyphs once glyph keepers are killed, much like previous raid encounters. Towards the back of the area, you'll see a set of stairs that leads up to an area under the darkness superweapon that Rulk is building, which acts as the boss DPS area. You'll see a large cocoon floating ominously above this long staircase. The encounter is started by approaching the force field and being thrown back. The cocoon will disappear, and Rulk will descend from it with a glaive weapon and set up a rather poorly designed force field that you can't move through, but you can still shoot through. The new mechanic to add into the mix for the Dominion encounter will be juggling leeching force and emanating force buffs. If you're in a fire team that's new to the raid, I'd suggest that initially you use the single dunk method to learn the mechanics. Once you're used to this, you can go on to use the double dunk method which is quicker, but has a few more moving parts. For the single dunk, you'll need a team of two jugglers and a runner, and three on ad clear duty, one of whom will act as the caller. One of the jugglers or runners will also need to call out the resonant totem glyphs that appear for the ad clear caller to work out which non-resonant glyph matches. They can then search for the obelisks showing that glyph for the runner to dunk into. This diagram shows the juggle mechanic for single dunks of the emanating force buff. As you can see from step 1, the two jugglers and runner all start with no buff. In step 2, juggler 1 will shoot the large crux to gain the leeching force buff. This has a 45 second timer to be swapped or converted into emanating force. As a juggler, the general rule of thumb is that if you have the leeching force buff, you need to be standing on the give plate, and if you don't, you need to be ready to shoot your side crux when they appear to transfer the leeching force to yourself. To transfer the buff in step 3, while juggler 1 is standing on the give plate, juggler 2 and the runner shoot the smaller cruxes. To make sure two people don't shoot the same small crux, no matter where you're standing in the arena, the juggler should always shoot the left crux, and the runner should always shoot the right. Cruxes don't have to be shot simultaneously, but the juggler with leeching force must continue to stand on the give plate until the buff has been transferred to both guardians. For step 4, the runner now needs to convert the leeching force into emanating force by jumping into the middle of one of the dark energy beams that Rulk shoots periodically through the left, centre and right sides of the room. This resets the runner's timer to 45 seconds. While they're doing this, the two jugglers swap places ready to transfer the buff again. Throughout this phase, one juggler will always need to be carrying the leeching force to transfer to the other juggler and runner. The runner should be keeping sight of where Rulk will fire the beam and should call out Beam Mid to warn a juggler to get off the give plate and out of the way so they don't inadvertently pick up the emanating force buff. For step 5, the runner with the emanating force can pass through the force field and deposit resonance into the obelisk identified by the caller. Be aware that dunking into the wrong obelisk will kill the runner. This will push the force field back a little and shuffle the glyphs on the obelisks. We find that the runners calling out how many resonances have been dunked so far helps keep the fire team on top of where they are in the downstairs phase. 
At this point, Juggler 1 and the runner will have no buff, and Juggler 2 will have the leeching force, similar to the state the team was in after step 2. You can then repeat steps 3 to 6 again until 4 obelisks have been cleared. At this point, there will be two final obelisks which can be cleared simultaneously by the runner and Juggler 2. To set this up, as before in step 3, both Juggler 2 and the runner shoot the smaller cruxes while Juggler 1 stands on the glyph plate. This would be step 19. However, this time for step 20, both will jump to stand in Rook's Dark Energy Beam to gain the Emanating Force buff. There will be two obelisks with a matching glyph that can be cleared by Juggler 2 and the runner to remove the force field completely and force Rulk upstairs. The runner should call which one they will dunk and Juggler 2 takes the other. The two obelisks will need to be cleared within a second or so of each other. If one is cleared and not the other, the obelisk glyphs will reshuffle and the last one will need to be located again. Once you get used to juggling the leeching force, you can try double dunking. Each time the obelisks show glyphs, two will match, so two can be cleared at a time. To do this, you will need two jugglers, two runners and two guardians on ad clear duty. In addition, runner one will act as the resonant totem caller, and the caller on the ad clear team will spot the non-resonant totem and then call the obelisks to be cleared. The first three steps are the same as the single dunk method. Everyone starts with no force. Juggler 1 shoots the big crux to get leeching force, and then Juggler 2 and Runner 1 shoot the small cruxes while Juggler 1 stands on the plate to transfer the leeching force. Again, jugglers should always shoot the left crux and runners the right. For the new step 4, jugglers 1 and 2 swap, so that Juggler 2 is on the glyph plate with leeching force as shown on step 5. This time, Juggler 1 and Runner 2 shoot the small cruxes to transfer the leeching force from Juggler 2. Runners 1 and 2 now both hold the leeching force and can jump into Rulk's dark energy beam to convert it into emanating force as per step 7. Runners 1 and 2 dunk emanating force into one of the two obelisks identified by the caller on the ad clear team to push the force field back two steps. Runner 1 should call which one they're dunking into, leaving Juggler 2 to cover the other. This is then repeated three times in total to clear all six obelisks and move to the boss DPS phase. Now we've seen how juggling works, we'll move on to the ad clear and caller roles which are happening in parallel. After the encounter starts, ads, together with two glyph keepers, a resonant taken phalanx on the left and scorn chieftain on the right, will spawn into the area. It's the job of the ad clear team, with any jugglers or runners who aren't busy, to kill these as quickly as possible. One member of the ad clear team will act as the caller, scanning all six obelisks as new sets of glyphs appear and telling runners which obelisks to dunk their emanating force into. As in the exhibition encounter, once the glyph keepers are killed, the three glyphs that appear on each of the front totems needs to be compared to see which one matches. Only someone with leeching or emanating force can see the glyphs on the left side, and only someone with no buff can see the right. Generally, we find it easier if someone with leeching or emanating force reads their totem glyphs out first and lets the caller match them. Once done, the caller can then start looking for the obelisks that the common glyph appears on. There will be two each time. If you're single dunking, you can call one or both and let the runner choose. For someone new, simple ad clear duty is the easiest. They can take the opportunity to look for glyphs that are called out in the lower and upper areas and gain understanding of the mechanics. If the timer runs out and you lose the leeching buff, the side crystals are shot without the juggler with leeching force standing on the give plate, or the juggler obtains the emanating force buff inadvertently by being caught in a dark energy beam, you can reset and reshoot the large central crux again. At this point, two new glyph keepers will spawn towards the back of the downstairs arena, and three glyphs appear on each totem close to the long staircase when they're killed. The large central crux can only be shot twice before it becomes immune, and the team wipes. For your weapons, again, you'll need both ad clear and boss damage weapons. Select your options from whatever the current boss DPS meta is. Auto rifles or SMGs work well as primaries, with a sustained damage rolled sniper and auto loading rocket launcher, particularly if someone is using Jalahorn, or a boss DPS rolled linear fusion rifle are all good options. For your exotic choice, Izanagi's Burden is always good, as is Jalahorn if others are running rocket launchers. Outbreak Perfected or Osteostriga can help with boss damage in a pinch if special and power ammo is low. 
one divinity on the fire team is useful, as Rulk is highly mobile, so crit spots can be tougher to hit consistently. Lastly, the caller might find a weapon with a slightly higher zoom useful, so that they can ADS to see the L3 and R3 obelisk glyphs. At the top of the stairs, Rulk will be strolling around with a large glaive, invulnerable to damage. Standing near it is dangerous. This triggers a high stepping kick that can yeet you out of the arena, so spread out and keep your distance. As Rulk moves around, watch the floor in front. If a yellow path appears, this indicates an imminent glaive dash attack, so get out of the way. The last attack Rulk uses is a dark energy beam attack firing in a plus-shaped pattern that damages and adds stack of pervading darkness. Again, this is telegraphed as they charge up, so use this to avoid them. In the upstairs area, there are four obelisks, one in each corner marked with a glyph. Traveller, Pyramid, Light and Darkness, which can only be seen if you are not carrying any force buff. These are referred to as L1, L2, R1 and R2 respectively. To start the DPS phase itself, the fire team will need to run a mini version of the earlier mechanics and clear four random obelisks to reveal areas of Rulk's armour to break. After a dash attack, Rulk will plant its glaive in the ground, which will open up to reveal a crux similar to those seen downstairs. The runner will need to shoot the crux to get the leeching force buff. This will drop a glyph to one of the obelisks so that the rest of the fire team will be able to see. The caller will need to communicate which corner's obelisk needs to be cleared. The four glyphs and the corners that need clearing will be random, and the same one can be called out more than once. The Guardian with Leeching Force will need to step into the Dark Energy Beam again to gain Emanating Force so that they can deposit resonance in the obelisk that's been identified. Like downstairs, it's a good idea to count how many times this happens so that after the fourth dunk, the fire team can get ready for DPS. Clearing corner obelisks will reveal a glowing weak point on Rulk's left shoulder, right shoulder, left hip and right hip in turn. As each weak spot is broken, Shadow Thrall will spawn in. Other fire team members should be careful to avoid shooting the glaive while damaging the weak spot unless they want the leeching force buff. Repeat this process and once four obelisks are cleared and all four weak spots shot out, Rulk will roar and become more aggressive to indicate it is now fully vulnerable to damage. You now have a 30 second window for quick burst damage supers and boss DPS weapons. Rulk will continue to move around the area using all three attacks so you'll need to keep mobile as a fire team. Having someone use Divinity helps by giving you a lot to aim at for crit damage. Without it, you'll need to aim for the shoulder and hip armour weakened earlier in the phase. When he takes a knee, the damage phase is over, and you need to get back to the glyph plate to rinse and repeat. If you get caught when the barrier is raised, you can easily be yeeted out of the arena. Rulk will return to the lower area, with a large crux above his head, for the fire team to repeat the one or two dunk method from step one. Once you hit Rulk's health marker during a damage phase, this will trigger a final stand. You'll get hit with the Pervading Darkness debuff, and you'll need to kill Rulk before it reaches 10 stacks and wipes the team. If you get close to final stand after two damage phases, you might want to hold off and go through the lower area one last time to charge supers and drop power ammo. If you're there on the third damage phase, hopefully you'll be able to hold supers and power ammo back to make sure you can finish Rulk off. Once he's killed, the chest can drop the Exotic Collective Obligation Pulse Rifle, Insidious Pulse Rifle, Lubre's Ruin Glaive, Forbearance Grenade Launcher, Arms and Class Item Armour. Throughout the raid, there are secret rooms to set glyphs to to match the resonant totem glyph that you saw after entering Rulk's Pyramid from the Disciples' Bog area. If you've done this successfully, then the first weapon dropped from the chest is guaranteed to be a deep sight weapon. I've got a separate video to show where all of the secret rooms are and how to open them. Rulk's Glaive acts as the raid gear vendor, so you can use your Spoils of Conquest to purchase additional weapons or armour. The first weapon purchased each week is also guaranteed to be a deep sight weapon. I'm now going to show these mechanics in practice with a guided video walkthrough of the first phase of this encounter, pausing to highlight what's going on. After the glyph keepers are cleared, and the totem glyphs are read out and the matching ones identified, I'll focus on the juggling, running and calling roles. Chooks is yep. on mute, at least for me. And I'm yeah, I, was say, I'm, I, I, I have been talking to you, uh, but yeah, excellent. Uh, I was on mute. There we go, cool, let's go. Uh, are you complaining about the fact that you died like five was, times? I did say uh, I was going to juggle. 
<laughs> but obviously I didn't. Do. Actually, before I got up there, with uh, so uh, uh, rallying is a rather important here. Yeah, Minnow is juggling. Minnow is juggling. Minnow is juggling. I'm juggling. Yeah. I think. So zone, are you happy to do the ad clear and call out where we're dunking? That's fine. Cool. Zone runs up the stairs to start the encounter. Then, yeah, then then we can just focus on the juggle. You and... have served your purpose. All that awaits you now is the gift of death. The darkness beyond your final days. Erin, acting as juggler one, shoots the large crux to gain the leeching force buff and stands on the give plate. Tooks, as Juggler 2 and Minnow as the runner, shoot the smaller side cruxes while Aaron stands on the give plate to transfer the leeching buff to themselves. He's in mid. Minnow jumps into the dark energy beam to convert his leeching force into emanating force. Tooks and Aaron swap places. The glyph keepers spawn in with adds and are killed. Minnow calls Stop, Tower and Traveller glyphs from the Resonant Totem. Zone Runner, the Caller, sees Stop, Fleet and Darkness glyphs and confirms that the matching one is Stop. He quickly scans the obelisks and sees that L1 and R1 both have a Stop glyph and calls them to Minnow. Minnow deposits Resonance in L1. Stop, Tower, Traveller. Keep on the right, still needs to down. Stop. Uh, above the L1, R1. Okay. Dunking one. Tooks, the juggler currently holding the leeching force buff, calls crystals to indicate that he is on the give plate and ready to transfer, but spots Rulk is firing the dark energy beam down mid and steps off to avoid it. Shoot crystals. Oh, I know, I got out of the way. Hold on, sorry. Right. Tuke steps back onto the give plate and Aaron and Minnow shoot the side cruxes. Minnow calls out that the dark energy beam is firing in mid again, warning Aaron to move out of the way. He jumps into it to convert leeching to emanating force. Mid again. Zone spots the stop glyph on L1 and calls it to Minnow. Okay. L1. Minnow dunks in L1, calling Dunking 2. Dunking 2. Minnow and Tooks shoot the side cruxes, while Aerin, with the leeching force, stands on the give plate. Tooks calls that Rulk has gone right to fire the dark energy beam, and Zone calls out a sop glyph on L1. Minnow jumps into the beam and dunks the resonance, calling out Dunking 3. Gone right. L1. Dunking 3. Minnow and Aaron shoot the side cruxes while Took stands with leeching force on the give plate. Shoot crystal. Minnow sees Rulk has gone left to fire the Dark Energy Beam and moves to obtain the Emanating Force buff. Zone calls the L2 Obelisk. Minnow goes there and dunks, calling Dunking 4. Left side. L2. Dunking 4. Minnow and Tooks shoot the side cruxes and confirm they are ready to double dunk into the 5th and 6th obelisks to clear them together. Okay, double dunk. Double. Alex calls the darkness energy beam is in mid. Zone calls that the two stop glyphs are on L3 and R2. Tooks jumps to get the emanating force buff, but Minnow doesn't. Tooks, with a refreshed timer, calls that he is happy to wait for Minnow to pick up the next beam so that they can still double dunk. Middle. 
L3, R2. I'll take L3. Oh, I didn't okay. get emanating. Okay. Sorry. Just don't want so to go. I'll, I'll uh, hang on to dunk until we've got time. Mino sees Rulk has gone left and moves to get the beam to upgrade to emanating force. He then coordinates his dunk in L3 with Tooks at R2. This spawns a final round of adds which are cleared before the fire team moves upstairs to prepare for boss DPS. Have a change though. Still L3, R2. Cool. Okay, I'll take L3. <clears throat> Dunking. Should be as good. Back to the tower. <laughs> These jokes never get old. Never. <laughs> Throughout the boss fight, watch for the yellow path that telegraphs the dash attack and the dark energy beam attack presaged by Rulk planted the glaive in the floor. Mino shoots the glaive crux to get the leeching force buff, and Alex and Tooks call out the pyramid glyph dropped by Rulk. Mino jumps into the darkness beam to get the emanating force, and deposits resonance in the pyramid L2 obelisk, calling dunking 1. The rest of the fire team shoot Rulk's glowing left shoulder to break the armour there. Pyramid. Uh, pyramid. L2 on the way. Dunking one. Minnow shoots the glaive and Tooks calls darkness at R2. Minnow gets emanating force and dunks, calling dunking two. The fire team break the glowing armor on Rulk's right shoulder. Uh, darkness. Minnow shoots the glaive and Tooks calls Pyramid again. Minnow gets emanating force and dunks in L2, calling dunking 3. The fire team break the armour on Rulk's left hip. Pyramid. Dunking 3. The glaive is in an awkward position behind Rulk, and Minnow can't get line of sight. Alex shoots it, and Tooks calls light at R1. Alex gets emanating force and dunks. The fire team breaks the armour on Rulk's right hip, and with all the armour now weakened, Rulk roars and becomes aggressive, indicating it's DPS time. Zone uses Divinity, while the rest of the fire team use their boss damage weapons and burst damage supers with the varying degrees of success that will definitely make the clan's Christmas blooper reel. Okay, you've got lead. Uh, light. I do. Light is. Um, R1. R1. I, I, need, I need to get emanating first. Okay, yep. R1. It's R1 when R1. you get emanating. Yep. Yep. Okay, dunking. Alright, I'm damage. Oh, sorry. yes. Completely whipped my super. Well, he's teleporting all over the place then for me. Yeah. Oh, mother of the lover. He's a big. With Rulk now immune to damage, the fire team evacuate to the gift plate to rinse and repeat. Yeah. Uh, uh, run away, run away. I didn't manage to get in. <laughs> But, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, damage, Also, I kept it paid PG-13, even in the... <laughs> I didn't! I didn't! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what the flipper? You know, no, no. Uh -huh. Nothing else.
I'm now going to let the rest of the encounter play through without pauses. As in previous videos, you can follow an individual role to see how to carry it out, or watch across all the perspectives and pause for yourself to follow the flow of communication between fire team members. We've got Guardian, Commune, Knowledge. Oh no, knowledge. Drink, sorry. Drink. Oh, it's Drink then. Yep. Um, lock in. Uh, L3. Okay, Thank you, everyone. Where am I going? Uh, R2. One more way. Dungeon 2. Mid. Uh, R3. Dunkey 3. Right side. R2. Dunkey 4. Should be double. Left side. Left. R2, R3. Take R3. Okay. Dunking. Light. Okay. Don't one. Guardian down. Ah, I got the wrong one. Mine said. Right. Sorry. It's all good. I shot the thing. Okay. Uh, darkness. R2. Okay, I'm dunking. Darkness. Yep. Yeah. Just R2. Okay, Should be fortunate. Three. This is okay. three. Okay. That's darkness. On the way. Dunking. Breaking. Okay. 
Okay, last time. Nice. <laughs> Nicely done. Nobody saw it. One thing that Tooks demonstrated in the last stand is that it's critical to avoid Rulk's Dark Energy Beam, as you'll be hit with additional stacks of pervading darkness on top of those from the last stand mechanic, dramatically shortening your time to do damage before dying. You can also see that next to the loot chest, the three glyphs you saw all the way back on the resonant totem have appeared, indicating that they have been successfully cleared and confirming that your first weapon drop will be a deep sight version. That's the end of our Dominion or Rulk boss encounter video and of our walkthrough series for Vow of the Disciple. If you've made it this far through, I feel I owe you some sort of graduation diploma for sticking with us for so long. Certainly, over the course of putting our walkthroughs together, I felt really confident the next time I went into the raid. The first time, while I was really grateful for my fire team popping my vow cherry, I didn't really learn much of the mechanics being stuck outside on ad clear duty, so I hope seeing everything that's going on helps you as much as it did me and reduces your fear of volunteering to take on a more specialist role. All in all, this has taken about two months to put together, so it's felt a bit like a millstone of love around my neck, as well as seriously interfering with game time. If you found the series useful, and that it might be worth us putting together other guides to the raids and dungeons, let us know in the comments. If you find any mistakes, they're probably down to my misunderstanding, so I'll offer a British-style sorry right now, and we can all pretend it like it never happened. I'd like to thank all of my clan mates who helped with recording their own perspectives, and to Rick Bilson for giving me permission to use his maps as the basis for the ones I've shown in this series, Ascendant Raisin for their free-to-share glyph callouts graphic, and Kyber from kyberscorner.com for permission to use their raid loot infographic. From all the Clucker clan, thanks for watching, we hope that's helped you, and may all your drops be god rolls.